Hey, this is Jerry with TradeTheFifth.com. Wanted to go through a really great trade yesterday in ES. Uh, unfortunately, I missed the trade. However, uh, we were trading several other products at the same time, and I just happened to miss this particular one. Uh, but in any event, this was a great setup and some clues into uh, how this thing was going to go into uh, yesterday's session. Um, as you can see, I painted the overnight high and the overnight low. Uh, from the session before 930. It's something I've talked about in other videos that I do and you can see coming into the um, day session that we really struggled uh, To get above the overnight high and these are some of the clues that uh, you might have a failure of a trend going into the day uh, We've had a couple of big down days and in this particular one ended up being another uh, particularly big down day um, but you can see the alignment of the overnight session looked like it was going to be fairly bullish. We have alignment in uh, short-term time frames now for the uh, multiple time frame dot cloud uh, plot in our day trading suite here. Uh, stochastics look pretty bullish. We've got false breakout bars in 15-minute uh, time frame. This magenta color and uh, you can see the one in the background here. Uh, we've got a false breakout by the yellow bar. So everything going into the opening 9.30 hours looks like a pretty bullish day. However, after the open at 9.30, you can see we kept trying to test the overnight high and just couldn't break above that 27.50 area. And uh, we started getting some big distribution candles coming in signified by the red and as soon as we broke the cloud to the downside, we had a pretty big push. Got one of our black box breakout signals here. Uh, and if you would have taken this trade, like I said, I missed it, unfortunately. But uh, this was good for, uh, let's see, 27.31 all the way down to the low of 26.86. So that's about 45 ES points at uh, 50 bucks a point. So you're talking uh, roughly, what, 22.50? $2,250 a contract if you uh, happen to be fortunate enough to ride it all the way down to the end here. Um, ended up with false breakout bars showing strong bearish trend when the trend reversed. Uh, all of our multiple time frame dots aligned with, uh, I have an hourly trend at the bottom. So when the top four rows match the bottom trend, which in this case is hour, and I've talked about other videos in these uh, strongly um, reversing big markets that you want to have these time frames set much shorter so you can get in and out of the day trends. Um, you can see this alignment here uh, going with the top four rows matching the bottom giving you the square confirmation of the move down um, that you could have stayed in. Um, I, I keep a couple of other moving averages sometimes I use them as stops You've got the cloud, of course, which I most often use, but uh, you can, you know, use, uh, some people use a nine exponential moving average. I think I've got the, uh, the 21 EMA and the 49 EMA, and you can see how they kind of match the cloud above and below it. Uh, I'll often keep these on and, you know, confirmation of my trends when all of these things are kind of in alignment. In any event, uh, that was a great trade on the ES side. You can see the equivalent on the right-hand chart for the NQ. Uh, the NQ didn't have quite as strong a push, but certainly was in a very bearish trend uh, for the day. A lot of alignment in the indicators, and let's see, 68.50 down to about 67.46. Uh, that's roughly a hundred points in the NQ at 20 bucks a point. That's also about two thousand dollars a contract if you were to ride it all the way down um, and follow that all the way down. Another interesting point here. Um, you know, this is a little bit cluttered. I apologize for that, but uh, I try to keep my space somewhat tight. This green dashed line is a MACD 31016 simple moving average. Um, and you can see when we had this overbought condition and this dotted uh, dash green line, um, that's sort of what I call the overbought and a downtrend uh, thing to start looking for potentially going back short. A couple things will happen with this, uh, one of two anyway. <clears throat> the first one is if the price tends to stay up in this area, it's going to, uh, you know, kind of 
look like a little bull flag in this trend, it'll start flattening out, and this MACD will come back down to the zero line. That's where the two averages start uh, evening themselves out, and you've got the the 16 period, or the, excuse me, the 10 period average catching up to the three with price staying up high, and that's an indication that you might want to continue long. In this case, it kind of rolled over. You see we start getting some distribution candles here, uh, and we just couldn't quite push over that 27.23, 27.25 area. Sorry about that. And, um, you know, we ended up rolling back over another signal here for a different kind of trade, but looking at for an overbought condition in the MACD for a short uh, going back down through the cloud. You can see the MTF dots here supporting that. Um, this cyan and red line with the red arrow is the stochastics coming back down. Uh, that could have been another entry signal or any other signal you know coming off of this area here, let's say shorting below this candle um, for in indicating a reversal with a tight stop above this area might have been another way to do it. In any event, uh, just a couple of discussion points uh, showing <clears throat> how the black box indicator can be used uh, to get into some pretty big monster trends for the day, coupled with our stochastics and our uh, multiple time frame st stochastics and our multiple time frame dot cloud indicator. Hope that helps. Take care, guys. Have a good day.